It's easy to trust what we see, the shape of your hands, the glow of a morning sky, the way a friend's voice carries through the air and settles in your chest. These moments feel solid, obvious. They don't ask to be questioned. They feel like reality. But occasionally something slips, a word misheard, a memory that rearranges itself, a face you pass in a crowd that feels too familiar, though you're sure you've never met. These small distortions are easy to shrug off. Yet beneath them lies a much larger truth, one most people never dare to face. What if the world you move through each day, the one made of streets and stars and stories, isn't out there at all? What if it's in here? Not just metaphorically or spiritually, but biologically, neurologically, and psychologically. Modern neuroscience and ancient spiritual traditions are arriving at a startling convergence. What we experience as external reality may be nothing more than a mental projection. Not because reality is fake, but because perception is a construction, a rendering built entirely within the mind. Your brain doesn't passively receive the world. It anticipates it. It filters it. And in doing so, it creates something that feels whole, but isn't. This isn't science fiction. It's not philosophy dressed up as mystery. It's the cutting edge of consciousness studies, and it's changing everything. Because if reality isn't objective, if it's woven from the fabric of your own mind, then the boundary between you and the world begins to dissolve. And what felt solid might turn ghost-like, flexible, dreamlike. In the next few minutes, we'll follow three of the most disturbing clues pointing toward this possibility. Each one pulls back the veil a little further until what's left isn't certainty, but a deeper kind of seeing. One that doesn't begin with the world, but with the mind that perceives it. Welcome to Beyond Reality. If you like to question everything deeply, don't forget to subscribe. Let's begin. You don't see the world as it is. You see the world as your brain expects it to be. Long before any light hits your eyes or sound touches your ears, the brain is already hard at work. It's running predictions, simulating possibilities, shaping experience from the top down. Perception, in this sense, isn't a reaction. It's a creative act. At the heart of this idea is something called predictive processing, a foundational model in modern neuroscience. Instead of passively waiting for sensory input, the brain generates its own version of what it believes is happening out there. Sensory data doesn't drive the experience. It simply tweaks the model. The brain predicts, then corrects, predicts again, always just ahead of the moment. This constant forecasting serves a purpose. It helps us survive. The brain has evolved to prioritize speed and efficiency over precision. But this shortcut comes with a cost. It means that what you experience as reality is less a recording and more a hallucination that just happens to align, most of the time, with the outside world. Anil Seth, a neuroscientist studying consciousness, describes this as a controlled hallucination. The brain's job isn't to show you truth. It's to generate the most useful version of it. And what's useful often isn't what's real. Carl Friston's free energy principle takes it further. According to this theory, the brain is constantly working to reduce surprise, minimizing the gap between what it expects and what it encounters. In this view, perception is just the brain's best guess, refined by error, but rooted in assumption. You've felt this before. When you see a shadow in the dark and mistake it for a figure, when your phone buzzes in your pocket, but there's no notification, these aren't glitches. They're features of a system designed to anticipate the world before it fully appears. Even the act of seeing isn't passive. Vision scientists have found that what you perceive as a seamless image is a stitched together mosaic built from selective details and filled in by expectation. You're seeing what your brain thinks should be there, not what's actually present. And it's not limited to sight. The same principles guide your sense of touch, hearing, even time, the entire experience of being alive is scaffolded by guesses, some so subtle you never notice, others powerful enough to define your sense of self. If your perception is a prediction, then what you call reality is a loop between expectation and confirmation, a hallucination tuned by feedback. And the deeper truth? This illusion doesn't just shape what you see, it decides what's possible to see. Which means we're not just perceiving an altered version of the world, we're living inside a story the brain is constantly telling itself. And that story is only just beginning to unravel. Even this hallucinated world, painstakingly predicted by your brain, 
is barely a sliver of what's actually there. What you perceive is not only constructed, it's drastically reduced. Your mind filters out the vast majority of information before it ever reaches conscious awareness. You don't see reality, you see a curated feed, tailored not for truth, but for relevance. This isn't a flaw, it's a feature of survival. If you were exposed to the full spectrum of sensory data at any given moment, you'd be overwhelmed, paralyzed by the noise. So your brain becomes a gatekeeper, it lets in only what seems important, and discards the rest without a second glance. Psychological research makes this startlingly clear. In experiments on inattentional blindness, participants are asked to focus on a specific task, like counting basketball passes in a video. During the task, a person in a gorilla suit walks through the scene, stops, and beats their chest. Nearly half of the viewers never notice. They don't see the gorilla not because their eyes fail, but because their attention wasn't tuned to receive it. It didn't fit the brain's immediate model of what mattered. Selective attention filters your experience in more subtle ways too. In crowded spaces, you can tune into a single voice while ignoring dozens of others. This cocktail party effect feels like control, but it's actually a profound narrowing of perception. You're surrounded by data, but you only hear what fits the focus your mind has already chosen. What's left outside that focus? It might as well not exist. This isn't just about visual or auditory data. It's about everything, emotions, ideas, possibilities. Your entire sense of the world, your relationships, even your sense of self, is shaped by what your attention allows through, and ancient traditions recognized this long before modern science gave it a name. In Advaita Vedanta and Buddhist philosophy, this illusion is called maya, not an illusion in the sense of being false, but in the sense of being misperceived. A veil of mental projection obscures the real, not because the world is fake, but because the mind sees only what it's conditioned to. You've likely experienced this on a personal level. When you're angry, the world seems hostile. When you're in love, the same streets glow differently. Nothing in the environment changed, only the filter through which it was perceived. Now imagine that this filter never turns off, that every moment of your life has passed through this narrow gate, that what you've believed to be a clear window has always been tinted by emotion, expectation, memory, and attention. It's not just that reality is constructed, it's that even the construction is incomplete. What you experience is a fragment, a shadow, a brief, biased echo of something much larger, mostly unseen. And if your mind can leave out a gorilla walking through the room, what else has it missed? If perception is a prediction, and attention edits most of what remains, then a deeper, more disturbing question starts to emerge. Does anything exist at all without consciousness? This isn't just philosophical poetry, it's a genuine problem at the heart of modern science. We still don't know how consciousness arises or whether the world we measure can exist independently of it. Philosopher David Chalmers famously called this the hard problem of consciousness. How does physical matter produce subjective experience? Why should brain activity give rise to thoughts, feelings, or awareness at all? Science can track the correlates of consciousness, the neural activity that accompanies it, but it can't explain why consciousness exists in the first place. And this mystery deepens when we turn to the quantum world. In quantum mechanics, particles exist in multiple potential states at once, a superposition until they are measured. Once observed, the wave of possibilities collapses into a single outcome. This is known as the observer effect. While often misunderstood, it's not about human minds willing reality into form. It's about interactions, any form of measurement that force the system into a defined state. But what counts as a measurement? What collapses the wave function? Some interpretations, like those of Wigner and von Neumann, flirt with the idea that consciousness itself plays a decisive role. Mainstream physics doesn't claim this, but it also hasn't ruled it out. More recently, theories like integrated information theory and panpsychism suggest that consciousness might not be an emergent property of complex systems, but a fundamental aspect of the universe, woven into its structure like gravity or space-time. If so, then consciousness isn't an observer of reality. It's a condition for reality. This view echoes the ancient non-dual philosophies of Advaita Vedanta, which assert that consciousness is not inside the body, it's the substance of everything. The external world isn't something separate that we perceive. It's something that arises within awareness, 
like a dream or a thought. If this sounds abstract, return to direct experience. Everything you've ever known has happened within consciousness. Sight, sound, sensation, memory, even the idea of a world out there. You've never touched anything directly. You've only ever touched your perception of it. This isn't to say the world isn't real, but it suggests that reality as we know it cannot be separated from awareness. There is no experience without consciousness. And if there is a world beyond that experience, it remains forever outside your reach, unprovable, unknowable. So what happens to your understanding of reality when you accept that it may not exist apart from the mind that holds it? This isn't just a shift in knowledge, it's a collapse of the boundary between observer and observed, between self and world, between what's thought to be out there and what's quietly unfolding in here. And what remains after that collapse is something stranger than illusion, something profoundly alive. So much of what we call reality begins to dissolve when seen through the lens of the mind. Your perceptions, once trusted, are now revealed as projections. Your attention, once considered expansive, is exposed as selective and narrow. And consciousness itself, once assumed to be a byproduct of the brain, now stands as a possible source of the entire experience. Neuroscience and philosophy don't claim this lightly, but together, they point to something radical. That what we live each day may be less like an external world and more like an ongoing dream held together by expectation, attention, and awareness. This isn't a denial of reality, it's an invitation to look more closely, to ask, what is real if everything I experience is filtered through a mind I barely understand? And who am I if the world around me is inseparable from the one within? These questions aren't meant to unsettle for the sake of fear. They're meant to wake something, a quiet inward shift, a willingness to see differently. Because once the illusion is seen, not as deception, but as design, something new begins to open. You start to notice the space between perception and truth, between reaction and presence. You begin to inhabit the mystery rather than run from it. And from that space, a different kind of clarity arises, one that doesn't need to explain or prove, one that simply sees. You're not alone in this unraveling. Subscribe and keep exploring with us. One of the two videos on your screen now could be the next thread to follow. Thanks for watching.